Hello, hello, and once again we review a Mark Dacascos movie. This time, Crying Freeman, based on the manga of the same name, specifically the Portrait of a Killer arc. There's so many little important things in this movie, I'm going to summarize more than usual and kind of cut some clips in. We begin out in the woods in the middle of nowhere when two guys go tearing through the forest towards a woman who's painting and they're being pursued by a killer who shoots both of them in front of her. We get a short narration by her telling us that this is a moment that forever changed her life. After seeing the killer from before sneak guns through airport customs, we go to the Vancouver police station where a member of the Yakuza is telling them that he came to town to kill the assassin because the assassin wants to kill the young painter girl. He also tells them that the assassin is named the Freeman and he's an ancient Chinese immortal with Doctor Who-like powers to change his identity. He belongs to an ancient Chinese warrior cult called the Sons of the Dragons. Is their executioner. A single man. Very powerful. They need no other. Legend has it that the dragon breathes within this man, that he cannot die. His body's change. He could be Chinese, American, Japanese, any color, any race. But he is always the dragon, always the same man. The Yakuza guy is either lying or wrong because he's the target of assassination and is immediately killed by the Freeman. As the Freeman's trying to escape, he passes by the painter girl who is brought to police headquarters by a cop under protection and she calls him by name. The cop, hearing this, decides to interrogate her a little bit to figure out what she knows. She's so transfixed by the Freeman, though, that she lies and tells them she doesn't know anything. They know she's lying, but can't prove it, so they decide to have a stakeout outside her house. What they don't know is the Freeman's already inside, using his superpowers to get naked faster than any man in history. While the Freeman and the girl are inside having naked sexy fun times, the two cops are outside kind of just chilling until a mysterious woman walking through the woods talks to the male cop. Turns out he's been on the take the whole time, and while he's just sitting there and his partner's unconscious, the bad guys raid the house and try to kill the Freeman. The Freeman's partner arrives with a getaway car and tells him, Dude, you gotta kill the girl. She knows who you are. You're ancient, immortal, Chinese hitman, dude. You can't have a side chick. But he disagrees and brings her to the hospital as she's taken a lot of bullets. The mysterious woman from the woods comes in the house and kills any surviving hitman. The girl escapes from the hospital with the help of her aunt. And the good cop figures out that the bad cop is bad, but is killed before she can do anything about it. Then, our entire living cast just kind of fucks off to Shanghai for the rest of the film. 
While everybody's in transit to Shanghai, though, a soya factory protected by the Sons of Dragons is attacked and all the employees are killed. When they finally get to Shanghai, the girl just kind of wanders through the woods until she finds the Freeman. The cop has sex with the mysterious woman in the woods, who during sex screams out her plans for world domination. And the Freeman's partner keeps trying to tell the Freeman that he has to kill the painter girl because that's his code. He also hears voices in his head telling him to kill the girl and flashes back to how he got this Freeman power in the first place. The killer who cries. Your tears are your honor, dragon. You have become your fate. Despite the legend we are told in the beginning of the movie, he's not some immortal Chinese killer who changes his face. Actually, the old one is killed and a new person is kidnapped to replace him, given weird naked acupuncture and brainwashed into becoming an assassin. The feelings that he displays during his first assassination stick with him and become his calling card. He cried after killing someone, so he is now the crying Freeman. What's this shit? Who the fuck you got sending you flowers? Be nice if you sent me some flowers sometime, Tony. What, the rock on your finger ain't nice enough? You two-timey bitch, I'll have those fake fucking titties I paid for shipped back to the plastic surgeon. Who sent these flowers? The dragons. After the flashback, we get back on track with two extended gunplay scenes with twists and turns before, during, and after them. We've now reviewed four Mark Dacascos movies, and this one by far has the most gunplay in action. It also has the most stern, tense tone to it. The other ones have some silly moments. This one is almost all serious. I really enjoyed this movie. Different characters throughout the film have different feelings about what they think is going on, what they think the story is, and we get finally cleared up towards the end what's actually happening, legend compared to reality. The flashback might be a little too long, I think it's like 20 minutes, but it does its job overall of the storytelling of him just starting off as an artist who's brought into this world to be the figurehead killer of an ancient community. Well, some of the stuff with the artist woman didn't really make sense. We don't know why they're a couple and together, other than she saw him kill someone, and then he decided not to kill her, but he's killed so many other people, there's no real explanation why he decided to go against this pact and start not killing witnesses suddenly. The gunplay, though, is fantastic. They use all the sets around them, have people flipping over stuff and falling through windows, and all the sets are used to great effect. This movie is directed by Christoph Gans, who directed Silent Hill, the Mark Dacascos film, Brotherhood of the Wolf, 
in the beautiful French live-action version of Beauty and the Beast. Thank you for watching. Leave any questions or comments down in the comment section. And as always, I shall try to do better next time.